This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's uh, let's talk about the next match. It's Kevin Owens pinning Ryback to win the Intercontinental title. Nine minutes, 32 seconds. There's a spot in the match where Ryback tries to press Owens over his head. He couldn't get it, so he throws him over the top rope. And Owens crashes to the floor, taking a pretty nasty bump in the process. Ryback works a comeback, gets Owens up for the shell shock. But Owens rakes his eyes and then pins him with a schoolboy. Two and a half stars, and we've got a new Intercontinental champ. What'd you think? Well, let, let's keep that. Uh, Are you driving a big rig it. right now? A uh, what? Are you driving a big rig right now? No, I think the garbage truck just went up the damn street. <laughs> I was just wondering. I mean, I, I know Cody, uh, you know, he got a lick and put on him last week, and I wasn't sure. Man, did Arn think I better get another fucking job? <laughs> this big rig. In here. <laughs> well, now, now, now that you mention it, what the hell? Who are the who's who's the company that's doing all the delivering now? Oh, Amazon. Yeah, I had applied and put my. You know, put in an application. I wonder if that was them outside. I just didn't notice. I would love to have you spine buster a flat screen on my front porch. That'd be great. No, I'd have to do the driving and somebody else would be doing the legwork. We'd have to suddenly become a two man team. Yeah, what's Tully doing? Maybe we can get him involved. What do you think are Owens and Ryback here for the intercontinental title? Uh, I think when you have the arsenal of moves that when you're Kevin Owens and Ryback looks the way he does, my God, a monster. If I was number one, if I was Kevin Owens, I would want to get my finish over. And if I was Ryback, if I'm going to get beat, it ain't going to be by a roll up. Right. I would have rather got beat by that pop up power bomb. The best thing that Owens has in his arsenal. And that's how you get, holds over. So keep that finish in your, in your mind till we get further into the show and ask me about it again. And I'll tell you, uh, which, what are a few of the mistakes being made in this show, but that's one of them. Kevin Owens was, you know, he was just building and being built and he should have won with his finish. How much input do the performers have in a finish like that? Is it something that the agents leave up to them. The writers dictate. I mean, talk to me about, you know, how a finish is negotiated. If, if that makes sense. Well, it come, you know, it's, you usually leave the production meeting with a rough idea. Um, and during the day, other guys, you know, the talent has their input and, you know, if it's something completely different from what you had leaving the meeting, then you got negotiations that need to go down to, through vents and everything goes through vents and uh he comes up with the final word on that I, you know when you got two guys like that two heavy hitters you know i was just always of the opinion if you're going to beat me beat me with your best stuff and uh it's better for you it's better for me uh i don't know where that one was decided on but again look at ryback my god you think you're going to hold him down with a schoolboy I don't think so. It has become a bit of a crutch though. And it's almost a joke that, you know, a guy could take a bunch of finishers in a row, uh, and none of that would beat him, but just rolling him up from behind. Well, he's done for, do you think that's become a, a crutch or a cop out in recent years? Well, I think number one, a bunch of finishes in a row is the big mistake. It starts right there, right? Because you're just throwing stuff away. If it don't beat you this week, how's it going to beat you or anybody else next week? So if you put three of those back to back to back, what could be finishes, now they just become high spots. And you have hurt the move. You have made it more difficult to come up with something that looks convincing because you've raised the bar on the three big things you just did. So hopefully... And hypothetically, your finish would be bigger than all of those. And a lot of times that's just, and I'm saying a lot of times, that's just not the case. And it's a letdown, I think, for the audience. You know, you build a match 
like you build a finish, least to most. And uh, that doesn't happen sometimes. I think it's a big mistake. I also want to mention that this is the first time we see really, really bad ratings start to register. Meltzer would write on September 21st. Over the past two weeks, the ratings for Raw were the two lowest for a non-major ratings impacted holiday, like the 4th of July, Christmas Eve, or New Year's Eve, since 1997. Is that something that you guys hear about and are on high alert for? Is or When do you know that this rating is on uh, Vince's radar? When he comes in that door and sits down at the desk up front and doesn't say a word to anybody except Let's go. You know something's not right. right. And it usually involves finances or ratings. Let's talk about the show. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.